Hi everyone, welcome to the second and the last video on the Java class loaders. So in the first video, we talked about the Java class loading mechanism, Java class loaders, and we covered bootstrap, extension, application or system class loader. And we briefly touched upon the custom class loader. But in this video, we will be focusing on the custom class loader. So let's start. First of all, we need to understand what is a custom class loader. So we know that there are different types of class loaders in Java, bootstrap, extension, application or system class loader. Then there is custom class loader. So in Java, we can create our own custom class loader by extending the class loader class. Class loader itself is a class that represents a class loader. So if we want to create a custom class loader, then we extend this class and then we write the class loading logic in that custom class loader. Now that custom class loader can be used to load the classes from standard or non-standard sources such as we can load a class from database, from network, from file system or from any other custom source. It's up to us. It's de it depends on the implementation that we uh, are planning to write in that custom class loader. Now why do we need a custom class loader if we have uh, default class loaders like bootstrap extension and system class loader then why do we need a custom class loader i will take an example of the frameworks like spring or hibernate frameworks often have their own custom class loaders it could be to provide the isolation that means frameworks use the custom class loaders to isolate their classes and the resources from the rest of the application to avoid any conflict so a custom class loader can be used to provide the isolation it can also be used to implement the versioning system that means if we need to load the different versions of the same class then we can do that via a custom class loader a custom class loader can also be used to provide some kind of customization to enable the customization for example a framework may choose to provide some hooks that can be used by the developer to replace or extend the default behavior the default behavior of class loading so that is possible with custom class loader and security can also be a reason a framework can use its own class loader to enforce some security policies when it comes to loading classes so there could be any reason to implement a class loader and in java we can do that java allows us to create a custom class loader so imagine we have created a custom class loader the next question is at what point jvm calls my custom class loader now custom class loader is same as any other class in the system so it must be initialized a new instance of that custom class loader will have to be created if we want to use that loader so when we create a new instance of the custom class loader and use that instance to load a class at that point of time jvm will call the find class method we will see what find class method is so jvm will call the find class method of the custom class loader to locate and load the class so we understood what is a custom class loader and at what point jvm calls the custom class loader now let's move on to a small demo and let's see how we create a custom class loader and how we use it in java the class has a reference to its class loader which means we can get the class loader which loaded this class so in this example we have a main class and we can get the class loader of the main class by using name of the class dot class and dot get class loader so if we run this program we see something like jdk dot internal dot loader dot class loader and then we see app class loader it means this class was loaded by the application class loader or the system class loader as we already know and if you notice the command that IntelliJ used so here we can see that it actually uh, passed the class path and that's how application class loader or the system class loader knows where to locate that class and it will use this directory to locate the class and to load the class let's see how to write a custom class loader to create a custom class loader we create a class 
then we extend the class loader this is the mandatory requirement that in order to create a custom class loader we need to extend the class loader once we extend the class loader there is one method that we need to override which is the find class so you can see the add override annotation as well we override the find class method which is responsible for finding and loading the class so in this example in my custom loader which I copied from the internet what we are doing in the find class method we are simply reading the file from the directory that directory will be provided to this custom class loader during the instantiation process by passing the class path directory uh, via constructor so you can see we passed the class path or a simple directory via constructor and that path will be used to read the file and if we go to the load class data then in this method we are simply reading the file from a directory so this is the directory that we passed and this is the file name and this code is simply to read the file from that directory as you can see we get the file input stream from the file then we write it to a byte array when we get the byte array that represents the content of that file if that byte array is null we are simply throwing the class not found exception and if that byte array is valid we have some content we found the file then we pass that byte array to define class method now this is something that we always need to call from the find class method so in the end we need to call the define class method and we pass the class name and the byte array data everything else will be taken care of by the jvm now if we go to the source code or the super method this is the find class method which is in the class loader and if we find the usage this is the method in class loader class which is responsible for loading the class so as you, you can see here that first it gets the lock on the class so that it remains thread safe and no two threads can instantiate or can load the same class so first it checks if the class has already been loaded now this is a native method and there is no implementation that we can see if it finds the class then it means it has already loaded the class and we can simply use the class if not then the code checks if this class loader has a parent class loader if yes then it will ask the parent to load the class it says parent dot load class if let's say this is a bootstrap loader then there will be no parent in that class it's the responsibility of the bootload strap loader to load the class now if we still can't find the class then it calls the find class method and this is the same method that we are overriding in the custom class loader here this is the same method that we are overriding in the custom class loader so at that point of time the jvm will call this custom class loader and its find class method okay so here is a simple person class that i created in the same project and we are going to load this class file using the custom class loader in the main method you can see that we simply need to create a new object of the custom class loader same as any other class then we are passing the class path a directory because this is a windows system so you can see the file separator and once we have the class loader we simply need to call the load class method and pass the class name we have already passed the directory all we need to do is we need to pass the class name and call the load class method and this will load the class using the custom class loader if we run this method we will see no error that means the class was loaded successfully because we got the class object so that's how we use and write a custom class loader so that's a wrap up on the custom class loading and custom class loaders hope you like it as always if you have any question or comment please leave them below thanks for watching